Hi guys, it's Crystal. Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to iron on a coffee cup. So this coffee cup is just from the Dollar Tree, so it's only a dollar. And what we're going to use is we're going to use the base of our Easy Press. So I'm not going to use my Easy Press, but if you want to use your Easy Press, you're more than welcome. Um, and I'm going to tell you some tips and tricks for that. Okay, so I'm going to use the base, but if you don't have a base, all you need is a wash rag. You can just take your wash rag, get it down, and get your cup on your wash rag. So you don't have to have this base. But my sister had seen on Facebook that somebody had used their base because it's got this. You can have it hold it right here in the center for you, or you can have it like this. Now, it doesn't want to hold it. It wants to kind of fall over to the side, so I plan on taking a wash rag to kind of propping that up. Now it's perfect, ready for me to go. I'll be able to iron on that. I'm going to use my mini Dritz iron that I used before. But you can use your Easy Press, and what I would recommend doing is heating up the Easy Press, having it ready to go. Then I would pick it up, hold the Easy Press, get this down, get my um, my thing down, and then my wash rag. And then what I would do is, you know, do my ironing on and stuff like that. And as I'm going along, I would have an oven mitt. I highly recommend this because if this is hot, you don't want to burn yourself. Take your oven mitt, holding my iron in the other hand, grab my cup, get them out of the way, set that down. Then whenever I need it, I'd pick it back up, get my rag back down, then get my cup back down. Okay. So it's going to be a little bit harder that way, but if you want to use it, that's the way I'd recommend. Just be super, super careful. But I want to use the base because it's available and that is awesome for holding my cup. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to get a Teflon sheet. I recommend these all the time when people ask me. You can get a three pack of these from Amazon and they fluctuate the price between five and seven dollars and it's free ship if you have Prime. And they're big, like I think they're 16 by 18. You can cut them down or whatever you wanna do. You get three in a pack. I use them for painting. My daughter uses them for slime. We use them for all kinds of stuff. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay down my Teflon sheet underneath this because it holds up to I think like four or 500 degrees just to kind of help protect my surface underneath. And so I'm gonna do this. So I've got this ready to go. And then I've got all my pieces cut out. So what we're gonna do, just like that shirt I did before that was go pick or go home, I'm going to get this ironed on here and it's gonna be layered. So this is gonna be a layer to show you guys. So the first thing that we're gonna do is I'm gonna figure out where this is kind of gonna go to so I know for my pig. And um, I think the first step that I'm gonna do is get my go pig or go home so I know exactly where I want my pig. So I recommend if you're gonna be doing any writing to get that down first and then get your design. And this is gonna be something that's gonna curve around. So we're gonna get this done together. This is the first time that I'm doing it, so you're learning at the exact same time I am. So we have everything ready to go. The first thing that you need to do is get some alcohol, which I keep alcohol in my distress sprayer. I'm gonna spritz some down here. Take my paper towel, which if you have an alcohol bottle, you can just use alcohol on a cotton ball, or if you have some of those alcohol wipes, you can use that as well. You just wanna get off any type of oils on here so that way it's gonna stick good. So everything's ready to go. That's holding where I need it to be. And what I did was I just took my fancy little wooden ruler that I always do and figured out the size that I need. So that's what I did. Got it designed in that design space, got it cut out, we did it, now we're ready to go. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out exactly where I want this to be. What I like about the iron-on is you can pull it back up and reposition, whereas if vinyl kind of sticks and it's kind of there and it'll pull itself off, whereas you can do this with the iron-on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and get this kind of laid around here just like this. All right, I think that's good. And then I'm going to take my iron here and I'm gonna start in the center. I've turned, if you're gonna be using your Dritz iron, I did turn it down to about halfway. So I've got that. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start in the center here and I'm gonna kind of just get my iron and it's a little funky because you've got, you know, round cup. So you're just gonna hold it there for a few seconds and then you'll just kind of work your way around doing that. So you just wanna hold it for a few seconds at a time and just continue to work your, your way around. So I'm gonna do that, and I may speed this up a little bit. Next thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let that cool just a little bit because the coffee cup's gonna be a little bit warm. Um, right now it's not too bad, but just be very careful when you go to touch it. And then you're going to start to peel back. If it needs to be done again, then put it back down. 
and just work on it again. Okay, so what I'm gonna do at this point is, so like I said, we're trying this together. I'm gonna go ahead and boost the heat up a little bit. I'm not gonna bring it all the way to max. I'm gonna bring it on the second dot here. Now, like I said, if you're using the Easy Press, you know the settings, just set it on, this is normal vinyl, so just set it on that normal setting. But like I said, I'm using this mini iron, so you don't really know what temperature it is. So I'm gonna let this heat up for just a second, and then we're gonna go over it again, because it doesn't seem to be sticking very well at that temperature. Um, the last time I did this on the other one, I think I had it on max, and I really wanted to try to bring it down just a little bit. So and that's what I'm doing now, just kind of playing with the temperatures and stuff. So I think that's pretty much heated up. But like I said, if you're using an easy press, um, you would already have your temperatures, and you wouldn't have to be so concerned about this. But this time as I go over it, I'm going to kind of hold it here and there, rubbing it, and then holding it for a few seconds. Then I'll move to the next letter. So what I'm gonna do to make this a little bit easier for me, I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut off this top portion so I don't have to worry about it. So I already have that. And I'm gonna go ahead and work on this bottom portion again. So you're just gonna have to, like I said, you're just playing around and you're just gonna figure it out on your own of kind of the feel of it. It's kind of hard to explain. So, you know, you're gonna figure out how long that you need to leave it. And then after that, it's gonna be like home. I mean, you'll just kind of know, um, you know, how long you need it to be sitting there and what you need to do. So that way, after this one cup, you're gonna know and just kind of roll them out faster. I definitely recommend uh, letting your iron heat up more because I've noticed my iron does feel a lot warmer. So I should have let it set here and heat up a lot more whenever I move the dial. Uh, so I do recommend let it sit there for a few more minutes. I kind of jumped right in, so I think that's my problem right now. Um, definitely let it set there. All right, the last piece I've got left is my go. And look, I can always rotate my cup. So that way, as I'm working, so I think that definitely did help. Okay, so I would recommend those settings. I think it's gonna go a lot quicker for you um, and you're not gonna have the problems that I did. All right, so now I've got my writing on here. So the next step we're gonna do is work on my pig. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put that back. So I'm gonna figure out exactly where I want the base of my pig here. So like I said, what's nice about this is you can kind of move these around if you don't like where you have it stuck, but I think that looks good to me. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that down. And now I'm going to go ahead and work on my pig here. Let's go ahead and see. Yeah, so the iron being a lot warmer right there is working out so much better. If you're messing with one like this glitter right here, I have this, um, this is heat resistant tape. You can get it on Amazon. I'll have it linked down below. Super affordable. You get two of them for like five or seven dollars as well. I'm going to go ahead and use this because this is heat resistant. And get me a little piece of this.
and go ahead and stick it down because when you're messing with like this glitter right here it's on this on the sticky part and this tape is helpful if you haven't already purchased this for your shirts or anything like that definitely recommend there's a ton of roll i've had this for a while now i believe i gave one of the rolls to my sister because i mean there's just so much um but i'm going to turn my cup here to make sure everything stays lined up and get that down so that way it holds my image down so definitely recommend you guys buying some of that stuff I think at Hobby Lobby the other day, too, I would check that out as well. I think Hobby Lobby has some, and you can use a 40% off coupon. I think where you do your t-shirts, where, like, the um, paint and stuff is for the, like, screen printing, I believe they had some over there as well. So, if you're looking for some locally, I definitely think you can find some. So, now on this glitter vinyl, I'm going to kind of, I'm rubbing, but I'm holding for, you know, a few seconds at a time, um, longer than I am on the regular vinyl. And just going to continue to like rotate my cup. So I'm holding my hand on the handle, holding it, and I'm rubbing it as a cross as I'm going across. So you see I'm kind of just rubbing it and holding. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get a little bit more. I've got one section here that just didn't kind of stick his foot, so I'm gonna go ahead and get that. All right, so what I'm gonna do, now that I have that off, I'm gonna kind of just bump it a little bit here and there and just kind of heat this directly. I know a lot of people get really scared and they're like, oh my God, you don't have something on there. I get that question all the time. But I promise you, um, I haven't had anything happen to mine. So just be nice and easy with it and just kind of go over it again. So I've done that pretty much every time. Like I have done going over or just, you know, layering without another sheet on top and you're totally fine. So. Don't be scared, you could always, if you're so scared about it, you could always take like an old towel, so to test on t-shirts or something, an old t-shirt, take an old towel or something, take a small piece of vinyl, just cut it in a square, put it down and do some layering, do a couple of those, pull one piece off, put another piece, do it again, just so you can get the feel of that to see that it's totally fine. So do that too on, you know, if you wanna test it out with glitters and stuff too, just test pieces like that so you can feel more comfortable knowing that you're gonna be totally fine. So here is our cup. I think it came out adorable and that's gonna last a long time. I would recommend just letting it set at least 24 hours, just kind of letting everything kind of here. I know once it's done, it's done, but um, I have asked people, I've had people ask me about going over it with anything. You could go over it with a clear Mod, you know, with Mod Podge if you wanted to, the dishwasher safe, or which is right here, this dishwasher safe one. You could always go over it with that. Or if you wanted to, I mean, you could go over it with an epoxy. Just take um, some epoxy and go over it with a, um, like a foam brush and just get a real nice clear coat all over the whole thing and let it, you know, dry upside down if you wanted to feel really protected. But I do want to show you guys a little tri trick today. So let me go ahead and move this out of the way. And I'm going to keep my wash rag. I'm not going to do this inside there because, um... I don't want to get glitter all over that because it does have my, I don't want the glitter to end up on the iron, all that kind of stuff. So what I want to go ahead and show you guys is another trick today. So if you wanted to add glitter down here around your bottom or on your handle or anything like that, I'm going to show you how that is done. So let's go ahead and get started. The things that you're going to need for this is dishwasher safe Mod Podge, a foam brush, and glitter. So you're going to want some glitter. I, I bought this pack from um, Hobby Lobby. I got it off clearance and this was like a year or two, maybe two years ago. Um, and it's lasted me a long time. So you can just do any glitters that, you know, if you've got little containers, whatever you want to do. Um, so I bought this variety pack just so I had more to choose from. So, and this is a Hobby Lobby brand. I don't know if they still have like this kit right here or not, because like I said, I did get it off the clearance, but I'm going to do... I think we'll do silver. I was thinking about doing the red at the bottom, but I think I'm gonna do the silver just to kind of break it up a little bit. So I'm gonna come in with this silver down here at the bottom. All right. So we've got our glitter here. So the first step that you're gonna do is, what I like to do is I, I just kind of hold mine like this. So I'm gonna try to, hopefully you guys will be able to pick all this up. So this is what you're gonna do. And I do have, I scored this off the clearance as well. 
for 75 cents from Hobby Lobby, but you can find these about anywhere if you want to. If not, this is just gonna catch our glitter. If not, you can always just use an old scrap piece of paper, but I'm gonna use this today. So what we're gonna do, like I said, you can either use a, a rag to kind of help hold this if you're gonna do it on the side. I like to do mine upside down like this. So for the very first step, you're gonna take your Mod Podge, shake it up really well, all right? And then you wanna take, I just get a little pile here on my Teflon sheet, see? Comes in handy again, and it just washes right off. You could also do this on your Tim Holtz media mat or anything like that, or even a paint palette. Um, so I just go in with the glue first, and I'm gonna get, first of all, if you want it to be a perfect line, let me back it up because I don't wanna mess you guys up. If you want it to be a perfect line, you wanna take um, some tape like this, some painter's tape, because it comes off very easy, all right? So you take some painter's tape, this is frog tape. So what I do is I kind of figure out, so hopefully you guys will be able to pick this up here. Let me get my wash rag. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out my line and wherever my line's gonna be, I start laying this down. So I'm gonna set this up so I can get it straight. So what I wanna do is just make sure that's straight. And you'll see that it'll kind of bend like this and I just fold it over. And I'm gonna go all the way around, just trying to keep it as straight as possible to have my straight line. You can always come back and do some adjustments if you need to, but I'm gonna come just like this. Like I said, you're gonna get some bubble lines. Tear this off. All right, I'm gonna get that down just like that. It's gonna be a little weird around the handle. You're just gonna kinda play with it and get it to fold over. All right, just like that. Just so you have, now this may not be straight, but it demonstrates to make the video not so long, I'm gonna leave it like this. So then what I'm gonna do, now I have a protection of all this, and then I have my straight line, okay? So now I'm gonna go ahead and take that Maj Paj and do a very thin coat all the way around. And you wanna have your glitter already ready to go because this is gonna dry pretty quickly. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this all the way around, just like so. All right, and I kind of bring, trying to make sure I don't have any lines, just like that. And I try not to really come up on that tape because the glitter, but it's gonna happen. All right, so then I'm gonna set my cup upside down, get my glitter ready to go, pop the lid off, set this guy like this in my little base. All right, so hopefully you guys are gonna be able to see all this. I'm gonna get this on its side here and just start getting my, my glitter down. So I'm just getting it all the way around. And you're gonna do this three times. So let me get this on here. Just rotate and stay in my base or whether you're using scrap paper. And you don't have to do this. This is just in case you guys do wanna do something like this. And you can do your line as thin or thick as you want to. You can do the handle. You can come halfway up the handle. You can use acrylic paint to do something like this instead of the glitter. I wanna kinda of tap it off a little bit. All right, make sure there's any excess, just like that. All right, so just like that, I'm gonna let it sit for just about two minutes and then I'm gonna come back and peel that tape because I don't want the tape to be, to tear off my line. So I'm just gonna let it dry about two minutes. So in the meantime, we can get our glitter here and get it back in the thing. This is a nightmare, I haven't used this before, but I do like it to catch it, but now I'm gonna go on a piece of paper. Just an FYI, tip from moi. I don't really like that. I'm gonna come back with a scrap piece of paper and get this in here. That was a nightmare. That was not cool. You'd still need like a funnel to work with this thing. Ooh. And I'm like, I've wasted all this glitter. I gotta get it on here. So what I may do is come back with like a little paintbrush to get it off here. This is a tip for me. I don't like this thing. I don't think I'll use it again for glitter. It does not funnel well. <laughs> Maybe for bigger bottles of glitter, I don't know, but it still kind of wanted to fall off the front. This thing's been out forever, so. Tip for me, no, I don't like that. All right, so let's go ahead and get our glitter back in here. A piece of paper has always worked well for me and I'll stick with it. It just kind of really just goes, you can tap it just like so. And what I'll kind of do is I'll come back and kind of tap on it a little bit to get any remaining. You can always take your brush at that point and drop it down in there. All right, now I have a huge glitter mess. So I'm gonna set this aside because we're gonna use it again. Okay, so I've already started. So what, at this point, like I said, about two minutes, 
you want to start peeling off your tape nice and slowly. And that way you are not, um, you don't have that tearing up your, you won't have that jagged edge. And also as I'm pulling this, I can kind of see where I need to come back and kind of bump a couple of these letters here because I kind of wanted to lift a little bit. So at least I know that now. I'm gonna go ahead and continue to get that. Now, at this point, I will come in with a toothpick, which I didn't have on hand, because I totally forgot I did this. Hold on, let me dust off. If you have any extra glitter here, you can just take your paintbrush, just a dry paintbrush, and just dust off any excess glitter, and you can always just do that at the end. All right, what I like to do is take a toothpick and I'll come back and you can see, hopefully you guys can pick that up. You can see where it's kind of came down and over just a little bit. I'll take a toothpick and clean that up. But since I don't have one, I'm just going to use a colored pencil. So I'm just going to, you could just use a regular pencil too, just to kind of bump that just a hair and knock it off. So just cleaning up that line. So if I have any more little jags, jagged edges like that, like I've got one right here. I'll come back and bump that as well. Then I'll come back with my paintbrush here and kind of bump those. All right, now you want to let this set for about five minutes or so, maybe five, ten minutes. Go do something else. Come back. We're going to go over it with Maj Paj again. And then we're going to put glitter on it again. When you're done, so whether you even just do two coats of glitter, you want to do that because you want to have that really nice effect here. So um, if one looks good to you, think this looks coated good enough, you just, what you would do is go over it with Maj Paj very carefully one more time. And then um, you would let that set and dry for a whole 24 hours and it'd be ready to go. So that way, and then your glitter's gonna stay on there. But I wanna go ahead and show you at least one more coat. Um, but you just wanna do it, because if you have any little spots like that, it's gonna cover that up. But you don't have to do that. You could always stick with the one. And look at how cute that cup is going to be. Let me kind of turn it like this, that way it's right. So that's, that's how cute that cup is, that's adorable. You really wouldn't want to do it at the top because your mouth and stuff kind of right there. I mean, the glitter's not going to get on you, but just bumpy and stuff. I just like to keep those towards the bottom if you decide to do it. You could also even do this if you were doing designs. If I wanted to put that white pig down or draw that on and fill it in with glitter like this, you could do the same thing. You could take a smaller paintbrush with Maj Paj and get that on there. This is obviously huge, but you get my point. Um, and you could do the same thing with any glitter. You could do some flowers. You could write that if you wanted to. You could take a Sharpie and write it out for you. Go over it with Maj Paj with, um, with your small paintbrush and then go over it with the glitter and do the same thing. So there's tons of options to do that. So I think this is gonna be okay. We're gonna go over it one more time just so I can show you guys what I, how to go over it with the glue. So you're just going to kind of I have the tape off, so you want to be real careful just getting up to that edge. If you go over, and you can always re-tape every time if you want to, I don't. Just you're carefully just putting a real thin coat all the way around. So you don't want to go over. If you go over, you can always come back even after the glitter um, is on there. You can come back now with a toothpick or whatever and just kind of bump that down. So I'm going to kind of just carefully... You can either pounce it or wipe it, but you really want to make sure you give it long enough to dry or you're going to be pulling off some glitter. But I didn't give it long enough, but I'm just showing you guys. Um, so I'm going to go all the way around carefully here. I'm going to take and clean that up. You can always take your fingernail as well to clean up any excess. So I'm just going to go all the way around, just putting a very thin coat. And this is exactly what you would do, too, to seal the glitter. At the very final step, if I was done with this, I would just put it on just like this. And then I would leave it for the 24 hours. So it's going to keep my glitter in place. Every time I wash it, it's dishwasher safe. And um, it's going to just stay there. So it's going to have that nice glitter. And this is going to dry clear. So you're not even going to see it. You're just going to, it's going to look like this. So I've got that last little bit there. Now to go over it again with glitter. Now if you're going to seal it, like I said, just leave it like that. If you're going to go over it with glitter one more time, you're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to get this thing here. Get my glitter on the paper this time. All right. And then I'm just going to slowly go all the way around this. Knocking it off, turning it. Like I said, you want to work quickly because the, the glue does dry pretty quickly. 
And you want to use um, Mosh Posh Dishwasher Safe just because it is um, food safe. I'm pretty sure that's, you know what I mean? It's, you just really want to, I just kind of like to stick with stuff that I know that's supposed to be, if that makes sense. So, I'm just going to go all the way around like this. All right, once I get it coated, I'm going to tap it a few times, both sides, set it upside down, get my glitter, get it back down where it needs to be. And you're going to see that's two coats, and I've already used this before. You don't hardly use any glitter at all for this project, so it's very nice. All right, I'm going to set this out of the way. I'm going to dust off all this glitter again, glitter everywhere. All right. Now, what I'm gonna do at this point, once again, you'd either take your toothpick or something, you know, a needle or something. I'm gonna kinda just knock this off. A lot of that is just kinda there. It's not glue or anything like that. You can take your small paintbrush and wipe that away as well, like so. Like I said, all this one that's all over the cup you can get later. So you can just take your nice small paintbrush and just carefully bump up against that line, like so. All right, just like that. All right. Now, I can see that some little parts right there that probably is glue. I'm gonna come back with my pencil here and just kinda, you're just like scratching it off. So the toothpick or the um, needle will work great. Which with this white one, you're not gonna see if it writes on it, which I don't think it's going to anyways, because it's a cup. All right, so that looks good enough just to kind of show you guys just like that. Now for sure, I'm gonna let this set and dry for a little bit. So I'm gonna come back with my video here in a minute and finish it up and put that last coat just because I wanna make sure it's done correctly. So like I said, now at the very end, once it's all complete, like the next day, you can come back and get off any of that excess. Like I've always kept, this is what I call my glitter paintbrush here. It's just a little one inch cheap paintbrush here. I think Dollar Tree or something like that. I always keep this handy because it gets a large surface here to do in knocking off any of the excess. So I always keep, this is this is the only thing I've ever used this for. This is what I consider my glitter paintbrush. So that's just a little tip as well. So we'll come back here in just a minute, put our final coat on, and that'll be it. And like I said, if you need to, you can always take your iron and go back over these letters here a little bit, just holding it here and there, and just kind of go over if any of these letters are moving, just like that. So I'm going to set this down. We'll be right back. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and go over this that last coat. So I'm just gonna dip into my glue here and just kind of carefully, like I said, stay in on the line here and just getting it all on there. I do like to come up as far as I can, making sure that I'm kind of overlapping just a hair. Not, I mean, it's just to make sure I'm covering all the glitter. I wanna make sure it's not gonna chip or anything like that. So I'm just doing a nice thin coat, nice and slowly. Make sure I'm not knocking off any more of that glitter. And I'm trying to keep my strokes. I'm trying to make sure there's no big pieces here. You could always come back and re-wipe on your mat a little bit there to wipe some off the excess so you're not having big chunks of, so that, that dries nice and smooth and not have any lines and stuff. So I'm just gonna continue to come down. Now, if you wipe up like I just did like that, you can take once again. This time I'm gonna take my Cricut tool because it's sitting here. And I'm gonna just come down, like I said, a toothpick or anything and just pick that up just like that. So, it's no big deal. Just getting a little bit of glue at a time and just getting that on there. Like I said, just making sure I'm keeping it nice and smooth. And any little spots like that that I get where I came up, I'll come back with my Cricut tool or toothpick, like I said, and just get that off here in just a second when I get it all down. But you wanna do it right away. You don't wanna let it dry like that. You wanna do it as soon as you're done getting all your glue on here. So, just like that. All right, 
Now, if you're going to go over your cup with any of that Mod Podge, any of these pieces, don't do it with the same brush that has the glitter on it because you're going to get it all over the place. Make sure that's fresh Mod Podge and a fresh brush and a clean area. So, I'm going to come back on my cup here. And get off any of this excess. You can always keep a paper towel handy to wipe off the excess on. I'm just kind of wiping it on my mat here. And just getting, making sure that line is as clean as possible. And then when you're done, like I said, as soon as it's done drying, you could do it the next day. You can come back and wipe off any excess glitter that's just kind of lingering around because it's just there. So you just come back and kind of wipe that off. So we'll let this dry. So for this one, I just set it upside down just like this. And I'll let it set for 24 hours. And um, then it's good to go. So... Uh, I'm going to go ahead at this point, I'm, as I'm letting this draw, I'm going to set it over here out of the way. I'm going to go ahead, I want to show you, this right here, you can wash this out. You want to do it right away before it dries, and you can reuse this over and over again, or you can toss it in the trash. Um, I like to purchase these bags like this. It comes with... 50 br brushes, 50. It it's $5.99 at Hobby Lobby. I use a 40% off coupon and 50 pieces. It'll last you a long time. But I do like if at this point I go ahead and rinse it out, I like to keep keep these for, you know, because I do go through them so much. But sometimes if it's just gunked, I just throw it. So that's a tip. And then to wipe this off, all I'm going to do is take, so I have it on my Teflon sheet, just going to take a paper towel. And it wipes right up. Now, if it dries, all you got to do is basically it just will peel right off. You know, it'll just peel right off this mat. It will not stick. So, I these Teflon sheets are definitely worth it. Like I said, I'll have them linked down below. You get like a three-pack. I think they're seven-something right now, but I've seen them as low as four and five bucks for the three-pack. Prime, free ship. So, um, let's see. So, now what I'm going to do is I want to go ahead and show you guys a couple of cups that these cups, so keep in mind, these cups are two and a half years old. So if these little pieces have fallen off or rolled up in two and a half years, I think that's pretty good. Two and a half years old or a little bit longer. Um, this one right here was supposed to say, I'm a uniform wash and snack, pack in bleacher screaming baseball kind of mom. My baseball, these, this is regular vinyl. This is not iron on. So that's one reason why I'm excited about the iron on. It's going to last a lot longer. But this is two and a half years. So I mean, if this cup has lasted two and a half years, I think you're good to go. So as you can see, the L's here have kind of peeled up just a little bit. This is glitter vinyl. It's kind of peeled up here. You can see that I've lost a couple letters. This right here is I cut it off when I was making it. I accidentally cut that. I didn't have a big enough piece of vinyl, and I cut those right there. No big deal. I went ahead and went with it anyway. So nothing there. But I am missing an I here. And other than that, the cup is good to go. So none of this stuff has ever been in, put in the dishwasher. I always hand wash my stuff, but it has soaked in the sink for probably 30 minutes at some times. Um, but it has not been put in dishwasher. So keep that in mind. Um, but it has held up very well. So here is another one. This one right here was, um, I'm a uniform wash and snack pack and bleach scream and softball kind of mom. You can see that I've left, I've lost the I and the N here. Um, and these are very tiny letters, by the way. So they were kind of hard to work with. Anyways, this is regular vinyl once again. I'm missing an A here, an H here, and I'm missing the dot of the I here, which I could have lost whenever I was putting that on in the first place. A little bit of my U. Um, the glitter vinyl held up awesome for this one. Um, on the glitter here, you can see that I'm, it's kind of chipped here and kind of a little tiny spot there. Other than that, it's held up very nicely. Um, for regular vinyl, I've used this one a lot. This one was just hashtag mom life and it has stayed good. Like nothing has came off on this one. Um, and that was just regular vinyl, but the bigger the letters I've noticed, the longer it'll last. Um, this one right here was an image. So it's silhouette because my daughter plays softball. The girl held up very nicely. A little tiny piece of her pants right here came off because it's a sliver like these. Um, that piece did tear. Um, on the hashtag softball life, I am missing the E and the dot of the I. Um, and then on um, back here where I did the softball, I had done her, her initials and then went over it with the, um, the softball piece here. Um, I got a couple pieces of the stitching here that's kind of popped up. I think just two there. Other than that, that has held up very nice. So this is just regular vinyl. Um, and I will keep you guys updated of how the iron-on's holding up. So far, we've been, I've had good luck with the iron-on. It's working out great. Uh, but I just want to give that, that's, those are two and a half years old. So keep that in mind and they've lasted that long. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please hit the like button down below and subscribe and I'll see you on the next one.